Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're going to be checking out a very quick personal list of six different things I think you should not do on your personal portfolios, whether you're a designer and or a coder. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, as a front-end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so my very first thing that I wanna demonstrate as to what you should not do if you're, you know, have an online portfolio is giving me nowhere to go, which is the case here. Um, there's also another a side note, which you also shouldn't do. Um, you know, I'm on a 4K resolution right now. This is real small text, a lot of white space. Um, really, it should be about this big, about 175. So make sure your media queries make sense and they work at all sizes, even the very large sizes as well. But this really, my main concern is just, it's not giving me anywhere to go. You know, I shouldn't have to scroll down. I shouldn't have to look over here and notice that there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of vertical space that I can scroll. That's not good enough. You need to give somebody, you know, a place to click. Um, and even just as important as that is if you do give somebody a place to click, make sure you're giving them relevant a relevant choice or a relevant direction, the correct direction. For instance, take a look at this example. Uh, this is a web developer, contact me. Nobody is going to contact you before they first look at your work and also before they first learn more about you. So contact you probably shouldn't even be there in terms of the hero section and your call to actions. I, you can have two call to actions. One should be primary. For instance, one that says check out my work or look at my work or whatever. Um, and then maybe a secondary for contacting or learning more about that person or you know a place to learn more about me. Um, but contact me, that shouldn't be it. They're gonna wanna see your work first. All right, so for the next thing that you shouldn't do, if I scroll down here, we can see we have like an achievements section. And uh, this person in particular is like info security guy. Um, and I was very confused as to what this is. So uh, Hall of Fame, whatever that means, uh, Dell, MasterCard, ExpressVPN, these are big names, obviously. If I click on it, it just kind of highlights it and nothing happens. So there's a few things wrong here. So I, I actually talked to this person uh, who runs this website, and this is their portfolio. And he said these are actually you know, companies that he's worked for in terms of security or finding bugs or whatever. Um, and that's awesome, that's massive. But just to have their names right here, that's not enough. What I told him he should do is to provide context. I uh, And I see a lot of this even in design portfolios. People will have uh, you know, maybe a, a little thumbnail of a website, but they, it, there's no more information. Uh, the, like you click on it and nothing happens or it just shows you a screenshot of it. No, what I told him he should do is first use the logos. Don't just put the name. People are going to recognize those those logos, and immediately that's it's going to boost uh, the the overall impact that it's going to have on a potential employer. Uh, and second, provide a little bit of details about what happened or what did you do? How did you help this company in some way, shape, or form? Don't just put a logo or don't just say the company name. Provide context. People are definitely going to want to know what you did exactly. For that particular brand, you don't have to be specific, uh, but you can at least have a few sentences, uh, you know, denoting what it is that you actually did. Uh, so I think that's hugely important. Um, let me raise this up. There we go. So 
Um, and it's the same thing all, all the way across through here. So that's definitely one thing that you want to avoid. It include more information. Ideally, you want to have case studies. Um, and I'll, I'll get to, I'll touch on that a little bit uh, in a little bit. So next up, I see this one all the time, progress bars. Progress bars for skills. Now, I, you have to put yourself in the mind of a potential employer um, and th think about what they're going to think when they see progress bars. They're gonna look at, they're immediately going to look and, and see which one or which of these things you're the least proficient at, just because they're gonna be curious. What does this guy, what does he suck at the most, <laughs> for lack of a better way to phrase it? Um, in this case, it's, I guess it's JavaScript. And what if you need somebody who's really good at penetration, penetration testing, but sucks at JavaScript? So what, what this is doing is essentially you're, you're, you're being almost a little bit too honest. I'm not saying to lie, but I don't think you should do it this way. Uh, so I, I'm a proponent and others have, have as well. I've been outspoken a proponent of dropping these progress bars. So if you want to, let's say for instance, I, in this case, he's not very good at JavaScript. I wouldn't even mention JavaScript. And I certainly wouldn't show that the fact that maybe I'm like a five or a six out of 10 or whatever. I, I think what you should do instead is to emphasize your strengths. All right, don't talk about what you don't know or what you don't know very well. Emphasize the strengths as much as possible and make those really stick out. And then if you do want to mention the fact that, hey, you do know JavaScript, don't put it out in, 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 in this sort of uh, zero to 10 sort of progress bar format. Don't do that. Just, just mention that you're pretty strong, pretty solid in JavaScript, and that's all you need. So don't, don't do this sort of thing ever again. Next up, lengthy about me sections, and especially before you actually allow the person to see your work or your actual portfolio examples. I, I know this is kind of like a nitpicky thing, but I've seen it a lot where people will have their hero section, you know, I'm a UI UX designer, maybe I'm a coder, I'm a backend, whatever. And then you scroll down and the next part that you see immediately is this real lengthy about me section. Nobody wants to read multiple paragraphs before they're able to see your work, all right? So the, the main thing that's going on in the mind of a potential employer is going to be, I wanna see the work that this person is capable of producing. If you're a designer, they of course wanna see your design work. If you're a coder, maybe they wanna see uh, GitHub links and actual real live projects and live websites and apps and stuff that you help develop. Uh, they don't wanna have to scroll past this. They're, that's this, it's just an annoying, it's an annoying sort of thing. Fortunately for this example, they actually did it correctly. Uh, they have the hero section, then they have the portfolio, and then this. Uh, but I've seen people do it the opposite, so that's why I said this is pretty a little bit lengthy. Don't do that right out of the gate. Show the work first. Next up, I'm gonna show you ugly portfolio thumbs, or thumbnails. So I would consider this pretty ugly because you have a, a strong white, like maybe three or four or five pixel border around each one along with a, a subtle glow. And that just does not look good. I, uh, and also outside of that, I also think that some of the the thumbnails themselves could definitely be improved. So instead of just showing a screenshot of maybe the main part of the app, I think a a, a good way to to counter that is to show perhaps some of these more like this example. Uh, interesting ways to show it. Like, I, I'm sorry, that was a really bad verbiage there. You should show it perhaps in, if, if it's for a, in a mobile app, show it in a phone. Showing them in the perspective skewed, like this diagonal approach is really cool along with the logo. It just makes it look a lot more professional when you do it as opposed to just showing a straight up screenshot, especially if the UI might be ugly, especially. So uh, you could just tell right away the quality of these are a lot better than the quality of this right here. So pay attention to how you're actually listing out your thumbs. Um, additionally, 
And this is gonna be my final tip. And I don't have an example here. I'm just gonna talk about something crucial. And so I've seen many uh, different design portfolios. I've, I've probably reviewed over thousands of them. Uh, and I've seen so many that are so ugly. And there's a debate that designers and developers have, should you ever use a template for your actual portfolio? And I'm gonna say, yes. If you can't design really well, I think it completely stands to benefit you to use a template. So especially, especially if you're a coder. Maybe you're a front-end developer who's not a UI designer. Maybe you're a back-end developer. Obviously, you're not a designer in that case. Maybe you're an identity designer. You're really good with logos, but you're bad at UI design because let's face it, these are two entirely separate different things. I, in those cases, yes, you should certainly use a template or hire somebody to actually design your UI for you. I, otherwise, if you try to, to, to take on too many hats, then you spread yourself so thin and you get yourself into an area where you have little experience in, and then you're completely just, you're, you're, it, it, it's a buzzkill when a potential employer comes to your site and sees this ugly, horrendous thing, even though, yes, it came from the heart and you tried your best, but you're gonna hurt yourself in the end. You're gonna get less clients ultimately if, if you're working with a UI design that has bad UX as well, uh, hard to navigate and just doesn't make sense and, and also ultimately just looks ugly. So. Always use a template if that's, you know, that type of scenario where you're a front-end developer, back-end developer, you know, anybody who's not a UI designer. But if you are an actual UI designer, should you use a template for your portfolio? My answer for this is no. And the reason being, that's what you're offering. You're offering to design somebody's UI for you. You're not just a front-end developer who may strictly work in the realm of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. You're somebody who's actually going to do at least the UI design in Adobe XD, Figma, Sketch, whatever. Uh, so in that case, yes, you need to design your own portfolio, and because it real ultimately, that's going to it's going to reflect your quality of work, your your portfolio itself. Now, if you get to the point where you put up your portfolio and maybe six months down the road, you've gotten quite a bit better, but your portfolio still sucks, well then you, that's where you have to revamp your portfolio to make sure it matches the skills that you're putting forth in your other projects uh, in your portfolio. Um, otherwise, you're gonna be selling yourself short right out of the gate. So if you're new, if you're new to this, uh, you're, you're new to UI design, and but you're also trying to make money doing it, meaning you need a portfolio site, the best thing I could say in order to help you design something that's as great as possible is, well, practice. I mean, you have to practice all, and you have to get the UI design fundamentals down as much as possible. Practice, practice, practice. Take my course on Scrimba. There's an hour long free one. Uh, it's also on my YouTube channel. I have so many UI design videos you know, outside of that. And there's also my long UI design uh, bootcamp on Scrimba as well, which I recently launched. Um, that's over nine hours long. So practice, 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 and also take a look at examples that exist uh, on the internet in terms of great UI design portfolios. You can use those as inspiration when you go to build your own. Of course, that doesn't mean copying, but the, the greatest way, one of the best ways to get better is to recreate what others have done as just a, a matter of practice. I have a video on this as well as a, as, a, as a way to get better just through a practice project, not a live project for yourself or a client, not a portfolio, just a practice project to recreate really solid, good, well-designed UI UIs essentially. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that list of six things that I think you shouldn't do on your portfolio. If there's some things that I left out, I'm sure there's many, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you disagree with anything I said, of course, and as always, subscribe. I'll see you soon, goodbye.